My name is Olushigan. Once again, welcome to the month of March. God has been intentional with us and has indeed been faithful. In this regard, I would like to use this medium to share my missionary experiences, stories and testimonies so far. Here is my brief background. My missionary journey cannot be clearly understood without sharing little things about my family background and upbringing. I was born into a family of 26. My father had so many wives and children. As a result of this, he became very strict and tough on all of us. He would take us all to the farm, made us to do hard labors. At an early age of 12, I learned to take responsibility for my life, paid my school fees, and most importantly became responsible for my basic needs. In short, all my academic qualifications were acquired by the mercies of God and personal efforts. Moreover, by the special grace of God, I got born again in December 23, 1988, in a Pentecostal church while I was in secondary school. I joined the school fellowship and soon became the assistant president of the student fellowship. It was during this stage of my life that I heard God's voice and assignment for me for the first time. The call to mission and ministry. As soon as I joined the school fellowship and became very active, I started discipleship training and started preaching to win souls for Jesus Christ. This decision made me to face persecution from my father. My father wasn't happy with my faith and conviction. At some point, I was sent out of the house and we were stopped from going to church for a period of three years. It was at this time that the burden to go for mission became stronger. I made up my mind to go into full-time missions and become a full-time missionary. Major obstacles after my decision to go into full-time missions. As soon as I decided to be a full-time missionary, I started reading and studying about heroes of faith. I was a little worried about how many of them suffered without financial assistance. I left my father's house and relocated to my brother's house as led by God for further discipleship and training. There I was baptized with the Holy Spirit and began to prophesy. While the burden was growing stronger, I wanted to be adequately prepared by going to school to further my education and work a little bit, because I don't want to be a burden to anyone. By the grace of God, I graduated from the University of Ibadan and Aloran with Diploma in Management and Education with Second Class Upper. At the same time, I was also trying to work so as to prepare for the journey ahead. I used this stage of my life to serve in various departments in the local church. I was privileged to serve as children teacher, as youth pastor, and intercessor in the prayer team. To God be the glory, I was also a member of the choir, mission and home cell team. I was an associate pastor and at the same time an interpreter. The encounter and my final call to mission. The Lord has waited for me for too long, I believed. In the year 2006, I went for mission training school, organized by Carpro Mission. Before this time, I had been nursing the fear of what would happen if I eventually go into full-time mission. After my graduation, we started holding prayers in my house for missions and missionaries. Some few years after, I received two messengers of death, who came to my room around 5 a.m. in the morning. It would have been difficult for me to overcome them if not for the mercies of God. I remember that the only statement that prevented them from killing me was that a recall of a previous statement that I once made. If they should kill me, the villagers that have been waiting for me would suffer. My Missionary Journey By the special grace of God, in the year 2012, I started my what I called my real missionary journey. The prayer team that used to gather in my house then became what we now called Watchman Prophetic Missions. The Lord told us during our prayers then that we have been saddled with the responsibility of hastening the coming of the Lord. Matthew chapter 24 verse 14 says, The gospel shall be preached in all nations of the world. We have been raised to fulfill this prophecy. Our first missionary journey took us to the Ohorese and the Iguns in Ogun State, southwestern part of Nigeria. 
We later went to Arunmu where our first church was planted in a challenging zone. From Arunmu in Oyo State, we moved to Okaka and from there to Benin Republic, Kwera, Niger, and Kebi states in northern Nigeria. Then Togo, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Guinea Conakry and Tanzania. As at today, and by His grace, we are working among about 40 languages and nations all over these countries and communities. And the Lord has used us to lead so many souls to Himself and disciple so many converts. By the grace of God, the Lord has helped us to plant over 150 churches among unreached communities with thousands of souls. The number keep increasing every year. In the year 2021 alone, 162 communities were reached, 44 churches were planted and 15,000 souls. We have just completed another rigorous mission outreach among the unreached communities in Sierra Leone, Liberia, with a total number of over 5,000 souls won, 96 communities reached and 521 and 43 churches planted to the glory of God. In northern Nigeria, the Lord has helped us to plant churches among the unreached Dukawa, Kambari, and Fulani. Our strategy. The Holy Spirit has been really been helpful. He guides and leads us daily as we yield consistently to Him. One of the strategies that the Lord has given us is discipleship. In the last five years, we have trained and raised over 2,000 indigenous disciples among the unreached communities. These disciples are the ones serving as missionaries in all these places. Our aim is to plant 500 to 1,000 churches within a shortest possible time and win as many souls as possible. Another strategy is collaboration. In Luke chapter 5, Peter saw a great harvest, but it was difficult for him to drag the net full of fish out. We thank God for the support the Lord has used ministries like Mission Enabler to give us and few churches, families and few friends. We cannot finish this unfinished task without putting these two highly significant strategies into consideration. Are there challenges? Oh yes, there are so many. But I bless the name of the Almighty God for the solid foundation and tough background which has not made me to complain because my life and destiny is attached to this mandate. I remembered my first missionary journey to Sierra Leone, which took me 14 days to and fro on the road and on the sea without food. I was actually robbed on my way back. Our first missionary journey to Togo was also without food and very challenging. What have I not experienced? Lack, sleepless nights, demonic attacks, rejection, disappointments, persecutions, betrayal, afflictions and needs coupled with the burden of all the churches planted. As I conclude, I want every one of us to know that the salvation of the unreached communities has been given to us. Personally, I have learned to take responsibility. I have been sold out to this mandate, I preach as if nobody would preach if I don't. I work as if I am the only Christian living on earth. John chapter 9 verse 4 says, The night is coming when no one can work. I have preached to so many souls not knowing that it was going to be the last time. Don't just be a disciple, be a responsible disciple of Christ. Don't wait for anyone to motivate you before you answer the call. Since the angels will not do what we have been assigned to do. Million of souls are waiting for you. How many souls will make heaven on your own account? How many souls will celebrate you when it's all over because you have saved them? Why are you still opting between two opinions? But as for me, for me to live as Christ, and to die as gain. To God be the glory. May your assignment not be given to another in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for listening.